Hello and welcome to Programming in PHP or PHP 001 brought to you by the University of Reddit. Uh, my name is Marcus. I will be your instructor for the next 10 weeks or so. My username on UReddit is Rec, R-E-C-C-K, and my username on Reddit is W-O-M-G. This course is designed for both beginner and intermediate developers as well as those who have never touched programming in their life. We are going to be focusing on PHP from the ground up. We will start with the bare essentials and we'll move our way up into more advanced methods of programming inside of PHP. Any resource that is going to be recorded on these videos can be found on the Google group. Obviously these videos are hosted through YouTube and the links to those resources can be found on the UReddit page. Now I'm going to show you guys the syllabus. You can uh, get the syllabus by going to the UReddit page, scrolling down to syllabus and following the syllabus download link. It's on a Google group. It's publicly available. You're going to get this page or if you're using the new Google group you'll get a different page. You just click the link. You can go ahead and open it. Great. Uh, now it's opened. Let's close that. Okay. The syllabus is short and sweet, to the point, gets the job done. Uh, the course is expected to start Monday, September 3rd. Uh, obviously, if this video is available earlier than that, then the course has started earlier. The course will go for about 10 weeks. I have 9 weeks of information planned and the 10th week is to be determined of what we're going to learn during that week. I expect a post every Monday and Wednesday. Uh, each lecture will be probably 15 to a half hour in length so expect to have at least 30 to an hour, 30 to 60 minutes available free time. Now the prerequisites Obviously, like I said before, we're starting from the ground up, so no knowledge of programming is required to be able to excel in this course. The only thing I recommend you guys have is a text editor with PHP syntax highlighting. I have a few listed, but there are hundreds upon hundreds out there for every operating system, so it will not be hard to find the one that suits your needs. I'm currently using PHP Designer 8 from MP Software. Um, the other ones I listed in the syllabus are PHP Storm, TextMate, Gedit. There's a lot out there, so you'll have no trouble finding one. Uh, below that, the outline of the course goes through all the weeks, Monday and Wednesdays, and week 10 is obviously to be determined. Uh, as for questions, I will only look at the questions on the Google group or through my UReddit email. Um, I probably will answer questions on my actual Reddit account, but uh, try not try to keep that cleaner for me. So anyways, this is our first lecture. We're gonna first go ahead and install PHP on our machines. Since I'm trying to keep this course as simple as possible, uh, we're going to install a bundled web development environment. Now I'm gonna be showing two uh, both of them are available for Windows, but the other one is available for uh, Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. So we have all the platforms pretty much covered. So let's first start off with the one that covers all three operating systems. This one is called XAMPP, which is X-A-M-P-P. -P. Uh, to go and get this, you can either Google XAMPP or go to apachefriends.org and click the click the XAMPP icon on the top. And from there, you just select which platform you're using and go ahead and click the download link below it. For Linux, you're going to download this one here, 1.8.0. For Windows, you, you should just grab the installer. Um, this is uh, not platform dependent, so it 
doesn't matter if you have 64 or 32 bit windows. And for Mac OS X, um, just download the DMG and install it. I'm sure you know how to install a program on your Mac computer. And then there's also XM for Solaris. Now, the one I'm using is WAMP Server, which is Windows, for Windows only. Um, to do this, just go ahead and Google WAMP. should be the first link. And when you get here, just click Download on the top. Um, there are a few links here. Uh, just make sure you download the right one. I'm actually using WAMP Server 64-bit and PHP 5.4. It doesn't matter if you get 5.4 or 5.3. I'll be teaching 5.3 and uh, most code written in 5.3 can be executed in 5.4 anyways, so you'll have no problem doing that. Just make sure you get the platform correct one, so if you're running a 32-bit Windows operating system, download the 32-bit one, or download the 64-bit one if you're obviously downloading 60 or having a 64-bit Windows machine. Now, once you have those installed, to verify that you have it all working properly, um, let's just go into our file system here. If you're using XAMPP, you're going to want to find the XAMPP control. XAMPP control on Windows is going to be in the folder you installed XAMPP in, and it's called XAMPP control.exe. It's already open for me, so it'll say it's already running. And when that is running, you want to click the start button next to Apache. Mine says stop because it's already running. So just hit start to get that running, and when it's running, it should be green. Okay? Now if you're using WAMP, you can go into the WAMP folder, or it should be in the start menu right at the bottom under WAMP server. And just click start WAMP server. Now how you know WAMP server is ready to go, you'll see this W icon on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And once it's green, you're good to go. Now I I know there are some issues with Skype and both of these servers. Just make sure you have Skype closed before you run these or else you're going to run into a little little problem. But after you have it starting, you can open up Skype and it's ready to go. Now, just because it says it's running, just because it's green, it might not be working. So, to test that, what you're wanna, gonna do is gonna go to localhost. You're gonna open your web browser, just type in localhost right in the web address, and since I'm running both, I have to change the ports on each, so I'll open up both. Now, if you're running XAMPP, you should get a window that looks just similar to this. Oh, well, I'm running XAMPP 1.7.3, but as long as you have something that's not a blank window, you're good to go. Now for a WAMP server, you should have a window that looks like this. Yep, if you have a window that looks like one of the two, you are good to go. So, now that we have PHP installed and running fine, let's go ahead and create our first program. Now in typical computer science classes, the first program you are most likely ever going to make is called Hello World. This is where we want to throw the word, throw the words Hello World onto the screen. So let's go ahead, open our text editor. Now you can see I'm using PHP Designer 8. And whatever uh, editor you're using, just file new. If you get something that asks you what kind of file you want to create, just double click PHP and then your file should be open. Now, let's save this first. So, if you're running WAMP, you want to go into the folder you installed WAMP, and then inside that folder there's a bunch of other folders. The only one you really want to care about is this last one, www. Anything in this www folder is available for you to execute and to see directly by going through your browser. I created another folder called PHP001 and this is where I'm saving my first program. So save first program and then .php 
and then hit save. If you're using XAMPP, you want to go into the folder you installed XAMPP and go into this folder called htdocs. Now inside this folder, like I said with the WAMP server, this is just like the www folder. So anything inside this folder is viewable to you by going to that folder in your web browser. I also created another folder in here called PHP001. And from here, type the file name. I called mine first program.php. Just hit save, and you're good to go. So now if you were to go to that folder we created, or just localhost, I suggest creating the folder just so everything's neat and you don't have to move other files around. So if you go to localhost forward slash php001, you should see this first program.php. I have a bad HTML folder in there, just or file in there, just so we can show you something later. Now if you click this, you're gonna get a blank, a blank window here. Nothing, nothing to see. So how do we get the words hello world to print on our screen? Well, I literally just said it. Print. Now it's not as simple as just typing print hello world. I mean if you want to do that, that's okay. But that's that's not using PHP. That's just using plain text and there's nothing fun about plain text. So delete that, get rid of that. To start a new PHP block of code, we want to open and close our PHP tags. PHP tags, anything in between those two tags is what's going to be executed. Anything outside of that is going to be rendered as plain text or HTML depending on what you type. So the PHP opening tag is a less than sign and then a question mark and then a PHP. Now you've opened your PHP block of code. And the closing tag for a PHP block of code is question mark greater than. And now any code that is written between those two will be executed on the server and will be shown to you on the screen. So if you were to save that, you're just going to get a blank window and nothing. But you might be asking yourself, hmm, can other people see my code? The answer is no. If you were to view the page source of that, you're going to get an empty file. That's because PHP is compiled and executed on the server, but it's rendered in HTML to the user. So the user is only seeing that rendered HTML. So it's secure enough so you don't have to worry about people just viewing your source to get your your code. And it makes things neater. So like if you have HTML being printed in your PHP block code, it's going to be outputted as HTML. So it won't look any different than any other HTML you have written around your PHP tags. Now, we want to get the words hello world to be printed on the screen. There are two ways, or two s easier ways to get this done. There are more than one way to accomplish this, but for now we're going to start off with the two basic ways. The first basic way, like I said, is print. Okay, print. Now there are two ways to print. You can either put the text within parentheses or just use quotes. I prefer using quotes. Okay. You can either use single quotes or double quotes. It doesn't matter. Single quotes are arguably quicker than double quotes. So it's not a huge deal. It's you're not this is the first lecture, you're not worried about time complexity just yet. So now inside these quotes you just type out what you want printed. So hello world. Now, to end a line of code written in PHP, you want to make sure that the last character of that line is a semicolon. 
I mean, if you only have one line of code, you can omit that semicolon. But don't do that. You want to practice something common, something you're going to be using throughout your whole program. So get used to having that semicolon at the end of each line. So now you have print, quote, then the words hello world, another quote, and then a semicolon. Now if you're going to your browser, refresh the page, you should see hello world is there. Awesome. Cool. Now the other way of getting hello world to be shown in your browser, instead of using print, you can use echo. It's one keystroke less. Uh, it's up to you which one you want to use. They're both equally as quick or equally as slow. But if you refresh, that's not going to make a difference. So now if you were to view your source, you would see that there's no PHP in here. It's just pure text. But if you somehow have code that doesn't show up, but you've, you've, you've typed exactly this, view your source. If you see something that looks like this, this means your file isn't a PHP file. So make sure to end your file with .php. So mine is called firstprogram.php. It's simple as that. That is hello world in PHP. Now on Wednesday, we'll be going over PHP syntax, PHP variables, and using variables within mathematical operations. So, stay tuned and uh, play around with Echo and Print if you'd like. And I'll see you guys Wednesday.